electrical energy I'll call it E sub E and electrical energy is the product of the voltage times the current times the time that you run the circuit. And I'll remind you that voltage and current are related by Ohm's law. Voltage is current times resistance. And the units work out. Volts times amps times seconds. Well, let's, I'll show you here. For this equation, I've got volts times amps times seconds. And that's the same as, well, a volt's a joule per coulomb. And an amp is a coulomb per second. And a second is, well, it's a second. Seconds cancel out, coulombs cancel out. It's joules. For electrical systems, we, we always run metric. Woohoo! So let's see. The other, the other piece of the puzzle that we'll, we want to talk about is thermal energy. Yeah, we'll finish. I was just, uh, <laughs> it was just a great party last night. Now it's up to cut that part, okay? Okay, so anyway, thermal energy. We're talking about thermal energy. And, uh, and so that's why I got the coffee. <laughs> Certainly not because I needed it. What we've done here with the uh, coffee makers, we've taken electrical energy and converted it into thermal energy. We heated up the coffee with it. And I know you're dying to know how that happens. So let's go find out. Let's see. We're going to need some coffee. Oh, look at that. And a drawing board. Look. Oh, here's some. Ow, that's hot. Okay. So I'll just remind you, you've seen this before, but thermal energy. or heat, we don't usually say heat energy because it's kind of redundant, redundant. Okay, there's thermal energy. And thermal energy, well, what goes into it? The more mass you have, uh, the more energy it takes to heat it up. Now the bigger the specific heat, the more energy it takes to heat it up. I'll remind you about specific heat, different uh, atoms and molecules hold energy in different ways. Some of them that aren't seen uh, as temperature. Um, the vibration between molecules, between the atoms and a the molecule, they, they vibrate next to each other and that stores energy and it doesn't show up as temperature. And they rotate. Two molecule, two atoms that are joined together, they'll rotate in different directions. It doesn't show up as temperature. So I can store energy into a molecule and, and some of it will show up as a temperature change, which is linear mechanical motion, oh, and some of, it, uh, some of it won't. So we need that specific heat there. It's the amount of energy per gram per Celsius degree that it takes to heat something up. And then the temperature difference. The bigger the temperature difference, the bigger the amount of energy you've stored or, or gotten rid of. Ooh, that's good. So let's do an example. Let's take that coffee pot. Underneath the coffee pot, there's a there's a burner. Let's just uh, let's see. Let's just assume that it's a DC because it's easier to do. There's a positive side, the negative side, and let's say it's a uh, you know voltage of 110 volts, it's DC, and let's say I've got a current running through there of um, eight amps, and let's say I'm trying to heat up a volume of water. Remember, there's potential difference. That's volume. A volume of water of uh, let's see, a liter is about uh, uh, let's see, about a thousand cubic centimeters is a liter because uh, it's the cubic centimeters a milliliter. 
So a liter, two liters of water? Let's say a liter. So let's say I'm trying to heat up a thousand cubic centimeters of water. Now, what else would I want? I got that, that, and that's good. And I want to heat it from a temperature of, well, let's say uh, 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature, and I want it to boil. So my second temperature, my final temperature, will be 100 degrees Celsius. I'm going to assume that I've got perfect efficiency. All the heat of this is going to heat up this water inside this thermal carafe. Okay, that's it's incredible. It just looks like it's about to jump out at you, doesn't it? Okay, this thermal carafe, I'm assuming all the watt, all the heat, the electrical energy is being transferred into thermal energy. That means I've got an efficiency of 100%. And my question is, I've got all this information, I want to know at 100% efficiency, how long is it going to take to heat that water? Well, let's see. Let's start with the basics. We have assumed with 100% efficiency that the electrical energy in is going to equal to the heat. So electrical energy in, electrical energy that's delivered is equal to the thermal energy that's produced. Now let's just substitute these variables for the equations, their identities. Well, electrical energy is voltage times current times time. And that's equal to the thermal energy, which is the mass times the specific heat times the temperature difference. Oh, let's see. I need to solve for the time. So I'll divide both sides by the voltage and the current. Time is equal to mass times specific heat times temperature difference divided by voltage and divided by current. If, for example, you got the resistance instead of the current, you could, you could calculate the current, right? You know, current is voltage over resistance just using Ohm's law. Sorry, didn't mean to digress. Back to the equation. That's our working equation. But we're missing some things. We don't have the mass. Now, the specific heat of water, I can give you that. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram per Celsius degree. We got that. We have to calculate the temperature difference. Voltage and current we have. So mass and temperature difference. Let's see. I need a room here, so I'm going to do it right up here.